promoted. Somehow, we love him being county executive, or we love him being <coughs> sheriff in the case of Bouchard. I think love's a strong word. I mean, with Brooks, he's just such an overwhelming personality that, you know, he just, he fills a lot of space, right? So uh, it would be true of him, but not of Bouchard. I don't think Bouchard, Bouchard has that same sort of... sheriff. You don't think yeah. people think he's a great sheriff, regardless no, I, of what I think, else. I, I think a lot of people... I, yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. So, so who are you grooming for uh, county executive? Well, I'm not grooming anyone. I think uh, candidates generally have to groom themselves a little bit more than a local Does party Does Andy want to do it? I, I think Andy, I, I mean, you look at Andy Myers, you look at Dave Woodward, there's other names that are out there too. But there's, we have, we have a deep bench in Oakland County. Does I mean, Lisa Brown want to do it? You know, Lisa, ha and I haven't talked explicitly about it. I mean, just being honest, so I don't know. Um, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, you look at Lisa Brown, Vicki Burnett, Jim Townsend, Ellen Cogan Lipton. Uh, we have a lot of great <coughs> mayors. I mean, you look at Brenda Lawrence. I mean, like, there's a lot of people out there that, that I think would be interested. What do you hear about Lisa for LG? I hear What's her, she's a name on a list, you know, but. Does she want to do it? I don't know where she's at on it now. Do you have I, a relationship with her? Mm -hmm. Do you? Close one. Yeah. Have you ever talked about this with her? Yeah. yeah. And so what, what advice did you give her? My, well, I, I think advice is a strong word for right. it. But when you chatted, what did you this say? Is, and keep in mind, this was, goodness, four or five months ago. Okay. I mean, just I, my recollection of the conversation <laughs> was, hey, yeah, I think you're doing good things as a county clerk. Do you think, uh, you know, how much are people pushing to, to go beyond that right now? And she's like, you know, people have approached me and, you know, and, and we, I think my advice was just make sure you keep doing a good job as county clerk, um, which she is. And if there's the right opportunity where she can have more meaningful impact for not just Oakland County, but statewide, I, I wouldn't rule it out for her. Well, she's got a free shot. She's right in the middle of a yeah. four-year term. <coughs> yeah. yeah, everything to gain, nothing to lose. That is true. It's a, I do think there is something to lose when any candidate or any elected official just looks like they're constantly looking to jump. I think at some point well, you lose credibility. I don't think it's going to hurt Brenda Lawrence this year running for Congress. She has great name recognition. I well, mean, like that, there is that's that. That's part of it. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, that's what happens. But I think there's a difference. Brent, I mean, Mayor Lawrence has been there, you know, for a while as mayor. You know, Lisa Brown's been her, in her first term as clerk, so if she's really, if, if she decides to, to, either decides to run statewide or is asked to run statewide as part of a ticket, I, I think it's a different consideration. And, you know, if she had been in that job 12 years, I think it's an easier thing to just keep looking at other things when you're are there for you, two years. Are you also years, getting different. at the fact that she took a pass on trying to run for re-election in, in a district that she got merged with? In the house. Well, uh, I mean, I, I know what you're talking about, but what, what's your question again? Well, she Senate? she um, she decided not to run for re-election, so she didn't have to face. I forget who. Yeah, she who ran she for was clerk and won that. Yeah, uh, yeah I, you know what? Actually, that's <coughs> really not true, though. Like, I mean, candidly, people. The reason she didn't run against Clusto in the 39th is she didn't live there. They purposely pulled her yeah, house right. out of the district. Oh, that's so, that's yeah. just to be yeah. clear. Yeah. I, I asked her about that early on, like, hey, are you going to run well, here and move? We a whole new district for her. And well, no, I mean, it would have had most of her district in it. It had West Bloomfield, it had Commerce. It, it was actually a district okay. that we're really confident Lisa would have won easily. For her, it was more, it was a personal decision about family and moving her kids out of their school district just to run for office. And she thought that isn't the type of legislator she wanted to be either. Um, so then she's she had the debate between running for re-election in the House in the 40th then, or for That's clerk. Meant, yeah. yeah, no, no, but, 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 but you know, when Kathy mentioned the 39th, I just figured I'd clarify. Um, so it was a long, I, I, I can't tell you how many conversations we had about it. She really wrestled She with agonized it. about it. She did. She really did. I mean, I remember as late as December of, what would this have been, 11, us having an hour conversation at the Building Trades, you know, holiday breakfast they do every year. Uh, where I think Brooks had popped in actually at one point. Um, it was like listening in. But, um, Fine. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, no, he's, he's welcome there. I mean, you know, but it, I, I, she, I, we probably actually almost talked two hours about it that day. Wow. And on one hand, she felt like uh, on the 30, uh, and running for the 40th, that, um, you know, she really felt like there was a lot unfinished work in Lansing that she wanted to do. And the other hand, she's looking at the road and be like, I could be here two more years. How much impact can I have with this legislature right now? What's the path to victory for Mr. Shower? I think it's a lot of what he's trying to do now, which is drawing sharp contrast between who the governor is and what he's done on his record versus what his record is and what he'll do. Um, I think it's, you got to excite people. You got to make sure people can understand exactly what you're going to do 
So he has to, I think, have those. And that's why something like him coming out for minimum wage is, a, I, in my opinion, a real smart thing for him to do because it's tangible, it's simple to understand, it's popular. Um, and, and I think the other thing is people have to rally behind him. You know, and, th and that's not just Democrats or, or labor unions or other. I mean, like, you got to be able to walk into Oakland County and meet with the local superintendents and school boards and PTAs. You got to be able to go into a lot of different sectors, talk to our small business owners, and them feel like you're a strong leader, you're going to fight for us. And this governor, I, I mean, I hate to use the word again, I wouldn't use it on here because Mark did it so much, but he, he really isn't one of us, and I don't think he gets it. Like, he just doesn't get the fact that. You know, when I talk about there's a couple hundred thousand parents on minimum wage, he doesn't even realize that. I mean, like, the fact that they're talking about, his spokesperson's talking about needing to do homework on minimum wage. I mean, there's a whole segment of the economy that I don't think he understands. Well, that's where he came from, though, economically yeah. himself. <coughs> but you think he's forgotten now that he's a millionaire? Well, I think, you know, it's normal, right? When, you, you know, you, you 30, 40 years is a long time, right? Mm -hmm. And... I know he pulled himself up from the bootstraps, and I think he's kind of forgotten where he came from. I mean, that, that'd be my quote for it. When Townsend leaves, you gonna run for the seat again? No, nah, probably not. I, well, I, I, I won't rule it out 100 <laughs> percent. Unlikely. It, I mean, honestly, I took when I took this yeah. job. Uh, yeah, there was different things. I actually, when I first interviewed with with Rock, I was interviewing for a national job with him that would allow me to stay in Michigan. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I kind of think of this as more than a two-year gig, you know, mm -hmm. and, and Jim, you know, he's up in another cycle. Right. I, have, I have a lot of good friends in Royal Oak that could run for the seat that are great. So I won't rule it out 100%, but mm -hmm. it's, it, I think it's, li it's pretty unlikely right now. Just what about the yeah. Board of Commissioners down there? Is it 1411 or 1510 Republican? What is it? Bill. Well, come on, tell me. No, no, no. I'm embarrassed. You don't on? remember the redistricting stuff in Oakland I, County? Yeah, no, I know. It's, it's, uh, it's yeah. actually 147 now. Okay, they got rid of seats. Seven. Okay, they got rid yeah. of seats. I forgot how many seats no, they got rid of, but I was not wrong. <laughs> the Republicans My question got it is, overwhelming. How about the Democrats in 2014? Do they have a chance to take it over? No, no, no not a chance to take it over. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know, I, well, it would take a lot for that to happen. I mean, mm -hmm. something monumental. Mm -hmm. um, but we can pick up a few seats. You know, it's it's going to be a long haul. I mean, that's what was so unfortunate is. I mean, Democrats can win countywide in Oakland County pretty easy these days. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe Brooks or you know a few of them are tougher, but we have two thirds the of the right countywide. You can, and you, you're lucky because you got your four year seats up in presidential right. years. But even we win state house seats in tough areas in off elections mm -hmm. too. I mean, look at Lisa Brown in 2010. Look at Vicki Burnett in 2010. Jim Townsend in 2010. <coughs> Those were all seats the Republicans were tiptoeing around trying to figure out if they could win, and. Uh, you know, Lisa went, uh, lost the first time she ran, but won the next two, you know, as an example. So, I, you know, the bottom line is the gerrymandering that's taking place in Oakland County is just, um, it's unprecedented, really, in Michigan. What did, you, what did you think of the ad? I thought it was, um, it fit the governor in many ways. It was quirky. <laughs> uh, I think missing a lot of, uh, well, how can I say this a, a little more eloquently, well, I think it was quirky. Uh, that's the, the thing that I think comes to mind for everyone. <laughs> I would have rather him make a big splash or emerge, uh, have minimum wage emerge on his agenda than just him doing, spending a couple seconds doing a, a, a snorkeling slash scuba thing as a symbol, symbolic gesture. Um, and I also think, you know, he misses the, the boat. I mean, we have eight point, what? If we had 8.2 unemployment at the end of the year, he'd call it a success. How much have we emerged? How many of those 200,000 plus jobs are because of the auto recovery largely led from DC, not from Lansing? So when we look at those things, I think the governor, it, I'm glad he's saying he's not taking credit for those 200,000 jobs because I don't think he's created an environment to do it. Um, and you look at right to work, we had all these promises about right to work. How many jobs has that created? Let's be honest. Uh, what do you think about the governor's homestead property tax uh, sweetener? I think it's, it's ironic to hear the governor who says he wants to close all these loopholes and make the, the tax code such a, a kind of static, universal formula and then starts putting these things back on the table. I think homeowners need, um, you know, homeowners, low working, uh, I mean, um, low wage working people as well as middle income people in the state could use a little tax relief. I think that's a fair assessment, um, particularly because they'll probably put it back into the economy and help us grow. I just thought it was interesting the governor seems to, in an election year, be willing to put these sorts of things on the table and when he runs for office he, he did, and when you he first came in. You think he's flip-flopped on these tax credits? Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious it's a flip-flop. 
Um, it might be the right policy, but I think he's probably doing it for the wrong reason. Which is? Political gain. Looking to, to try to mend some fences with people that he's burned along the well, way. Well, if you look at his budget, he has gone back to basically every group that he has cut and restored money. Yeah, eh, that's fair. I mean, but it's also it's interesting how he's done it. Is this my water too? Yes, it is. It? Yes, spring so, gin. Be careful. Uh, oh, I, I, I can use it some days. This day I don't. Though. All right, um, good. Um, so let let let's be honest. So uh, you, you look at like the education funding. How many superintendents would rather have their per pupil allotment taken care of versus the the way he's putting it back? I, I think it's interesting that every time this, this governor leads on some way to help local government or help schools, <clears throat> it's, it's always a lancing strategy. It's always lancing, deciding what's best for local communities. You know, I remember doing um, also the Free Press uh, editorial board meeting, like, what was it, 2011 in the spring with Stephen and some folks. And I brought in a bunch of superintendents from Republican districts uh, to that meeting, as well as some other folks. And you listen to them, just listen to what they say. They say, we don't need Lansing to tell us 20% <coughs> of health care costs have to be paid by employees. We don't need Lansing to tell us how to spend our money. You don't think they want that pension relief? Oh, I'm sure they do. Any, any school district would love to have the, the state pick up more of the tab. But they also like to have control over how they spend their money and how they negotiate with their labor unions. They want both. They, yeah. Which they is have <laughs> no control over the ministers. That's the <laughs> set, by is the, that's set by the pension fund, and and, and, the, and and the cap is now at almost twenty one percent, rather than paying the district paying thirty percent. Thirty six. Uh, it was that's where it's headed to like, in a couple of years. So I. So you say that's what they want. Yeah. Are, are they right? Well, I think there's a balancing that. I mean, you've been there. You know, it's like I I think. When it comes to local government, and this goes for revenue sharing to school boards, you know, having to deal with these issues and superintendents, there's a balancing act between when the state is raising the money through a tax code and doling it out, them having some ownership and responsibility for it. But when you look at the types of ways we've passed so many of these laws that have centralized power in Lansing for decades on, on municipal issues, when we look at the promise of Proposal A, it is disingenuous to say that local government, be it schools or cities, don't have a beef here. Because, I mean, the bottom line is, like when we did Proposal A, Governor Ingor never remotely insinuated, l let alone any other legislator, um, that we're going to pay for community colleges out of that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it's great to invest more in, in pre-K. Oh, wait a second, your Governor Granholm started that. Uh, well, I, I, <laughs> not in any way comparable to what's happened since. But she started. But she, she opened the she door. Opened the door because of pre-K funding <laughs> you know, and so on. Twenty-three million this year, forty next mm -hmm. year. You know. Well, I, I think that there's a. I think the thing we could probably all agree on, at least at this table, I would suspect, is that there needs to be more investment in education. And the question is, when you do it, do you have? Do you partner with local school systems and local elected leaders? and parents and so on in shaping how that money is spent and what it's used for to have the most impact in the classroom. Do you have any contact with anybody in the governor's office that you That close. I mean, like my closest contact with Dennis, for instance, was when I this first- This is Dennis much more. Yeah, when I first came back to this, he probably didn't even remember this. When I first came back to the state, I got a random call um, from somebody who's like, can Dennis call you about running the, it was on the Dove, issue. Oh, yes. And I, I took a pass, but the, so that was my last conversation with Dennis. And no, I, I haven't been the one doing the outreach to the governor's office on this, there, but I can tell you, there were conversations even, what was this, November, the governor was coming through Kalamazoo and one of the groups at the time I was consulting for, Michigan United, did a little thing outside of, um, you know, this thing the governor's going to be at and said, hey, come meet with us. You know, get 40, 50 activists out there mm -hmm. and, and rally for minimum wage. And, you know, they communicated, did follow up. They're like, oh, oh, January, January. Yeah, like that meeting never happened. And we weren't asking for a face-to-face -face with the governor. We were asking for a real conversation about policy. So that's why, like, when Bill was talking earlier about, like, hey, what's the chances that you guys get a deal done with these guys? I don't think there's an interest. But the dynamic last time was is that the petition drive was successful and Sikama at all saw the polling data that said it would pass, yeah. and then the dynamics changed. Yeah, and so that you have to happen. go out and demonstrate that you can get the names, which you know you can, mm -hmm. right? And you've got the polling data that says it'll pass. Yes. So once you launch this thing, you know, thing can change. Right. The thing that I, this is where it comes down to the devils and the details, too. They came back to us. Like, for instance, Rashida Tlaib has a bill in, does 10 bucks an hour. Right. It uh, <coughs> you know, reduces the tip <coughs> pretty significantly. 
and, uh, and it indexes for inflation, phases it in over a few years. It's a very reasonable proposal. Mm -hmm. I would argue the president and, and Tom Harkins is as well nationally. You know, if they came, to, if they pass something like that, you're maybe, done. It, maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm not going to say we, we would evaluate it, but I think it's likely that that would uh, that would change the scenario. Well, the deal would have to be you would agree to stop the petition drive. Otherwise, well, you don't get the bill. Hypothetical. Right? Hypothetical. That's generally how it works. Yeah, but uh, unlike, I'm not going to. This is the thing. There's two things I'm going to say on this. One. I'm not going to just hope that the governor will put this on his agenda. That's obviously why we've launched this right? and that the legislature gets it done. And the second thing is we're a little different than some of the folks who typically work on these things in Lansing in that we're not going to negotiate what's in the best interest of working people without them being in the room. So if the governor and the legislature want to have a conversation, let's do it in broad daylight. Let's have some low-wage workers there and have them make the case for what they want, and, and, and we'll actually value what these folks think. Like, I, I, before we launched anything, and one of the reasons we're taking this extra week right now before we launch the official policy is, I go back to people I represent and that I am trying to empower and support, you know, low-wage restaurant workers and say, hey, you know, if you got a 50% tipped elimination versus, a, um, you know, versus a, an elimination altogether over eight years or something, would you, would you want that deal? Would you, you, know, you know, how much do you trust that actually restaurant workers are really going to get paid the full minimum wage? Yeah. Um, you know, th I found the most startling statistic the other day. It, it's over 80% of restaurants, when, in, when there's been a check, have violated paying minimum wage. Whoa, 80%? It, yeah, you're lucky I didn't go after Mr. Schutte today. I mean, like, I was on, I, ironically, there was a phone call the day after the State of the Union with the Vice President and uh, Labor Secretary, who used to be at DOJ. And I never do these national calls, you know, someone talking at you. And I was like, well, we just found a committee. Maybe they'll talk. It's, it was all about minimum wage. So I hopped on. And a um, th th couple, two things that came out of the call anecdotally, uh, one I'll say on the record, one I'll say off. Uh, on the record, um, this guy who, who's now our labor secretary uh, was the Department of Justice. It was like, you know, we did over $250 million enforcement action. And candidly, there isn't almost any place we investigate that isn't violating it. Um, you know, that's an, you know, I mean, well, the, so the numbers that. on the record. So what the, about the, that? Well, well, this is, that's why the tip credit issue is such an issue for us because, sure, we have restaurant workers that work for us that make, you know, significant money. We also have some that have to fight every hour to make sure they get, you know, the minimum wage. The second thing that happened on the call, I, this is off the record. Careful, you're on camera here. I know, it's okay. off the record, but it's, it's nothing that candid, but I just don't want to make it look <laughs> silly. Um, I don't want you to sue me. No, it's okay, <laughs> but, but it's off the record. I, I, um, but, you know, I asked, I was like, you know, I asked, I said, you know, hey, can we count on you guys to come into Michigan and support this campaign? Um, because, I mean, <coughs> candidly, you know, the president's obviously talking about 10, 10 an hour. It's a national issue. It's a national conversation. And, we're like, you know, we want you guys to come here and talk about what your proposal is and so on. And the vice president said he would, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, he said, he said he what? Would. He would. would. He would. Yeah. Okay. So I don't want to commit stuff for his scheduler. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it was it was interesting to actually get to ask Biden the question directly. He can come in and buy a stingray. All right, we got to get out of well, here. Well, much okay. more was with MUCC in right. 2007. That's right. <laughs> so and he wanted to hire you to, 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 the no to run the vote. Well, to the run the yes on the And on he didn't the, offer the, the job. He asked if I wanted yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, how'd you vote on the job issue? <laughs> Off the record. What was it? Was yeah, it yes or what, what? I mean, I don't care. Anything. I, well, I, I it's a referendum <coughs> on the law. So what are did you it, what for did the, the law? I was with, I think, the In other words, yes. do you want to kill doves? You vote yes. Yes. If you want to repeal it, you vote no. Right. You know, okay. you guys will have a hard time believing it. And, and this is so long, I really am not 100% because I went back and forth. I actually think I voted for the dove killing, believe it or not. I think I did. So you're a pro hunter. Like I'm pro hunter. Uh, pro I am. I, but I am also for reasonable gun, gun safety control, laws. Right. Yes. <laughs> let the record show. What about the wolf hunt? What about I, I think the wolf hunt is being overly dramatized in terms of how many people really are having to deal with wolves coming in and killing their dogs well, okay. and so on. Well, you, so you think there shouldn't be a wolf hunt? No, I don't think there should.